In this video, I'm going to show you how you can let your users update a table on your web app that updates the data that's display, displayed on your web app, but also the data in your backend. So in this example, uh, we have connected a dynamic collection from Airtable, which is um, this fleet table from our Electrizy database. And we've uh, bound, we bound that collection to a table element in WeWeb. And in a separate um, in separate tutorials, you can see how to add a, a collection of data to WeWeb and also how to use the table element. In any case, we have uh, the data from our Airtable in this uh, table here. And what we want to do now is we want to add a form on the page so that users can update uh, vehicles mileage and you know for that uh, update to display on the page in an air table so what we'll do first is we'll drag and drop a columns element uh, right here and actually put our table inside uh, the flex box here the left column so this will rename left and this flex box will rename right and the cool thing about um, columns is you can actually resize the, the columns. So we want our table to be a bit bigger and the form a bit narrower. And we added some margins to our table element, which we really don't need anymore. So let's um, have it look like this. Now, what we'll want to do is we'll want to drag and drop a form container and we'll add it to the right column here. So by default, uh, there's only an email. Uh, what we'll do is we'll look at the structure of our database. So what we need is we need the car name, which is a string element, a text element. Uh, we need a rental location. So in this case, we can use um, either a text element or a linked element. And we have mileage, which is a number. And uh, it's an integer in Airtable. So let's first change this to car name. Uh, we'll change everything here. It'll be a short answer. Uh, we'll call it car name. And that's it, really. Now we'll copy paste this uh, three times. And here we'll change to location name. Location name. And it's still a short answer. And then we'll go and we'll go ahead and change to mileage mileage and except it will be now it will be a number and just we will multi-select these three uh fields so that we can style them at the same time and we'll add a little bit of uh bottom margin so let's go and add some bottom margin here it will be this one and we'll go ahead and add a small margin okay so now the interesting thing is whenever you drag and drop a form container uh, it will automatically create a ver component variables. And you see when we uh, created, um, when we changed the parameters of these, um, of this uh, form container, it created, um, it created new variables here. So let me actually refresh the page so that you can see, um, you can see the variables here. Right, so the, the variables from the components on this page are uh, car name value, which is here, location name value, and mileage value. So you see it here, 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 and here. All right, that's great. So now that we've done this, uh, we need basically to allow uh, users to select a line. Um, we obviously don't want our users to have to pre-fill everything. So what we would like them to do is when they select a line, um, on on the table, we want to um, we want to input we want to display the the um, the data from the table in the form so that the user then only needs to make a change to a field if they need to update it. So the first thing we need to do is on the line uh, create a workflow whereby uh, if the person clicks on the line, it will trigger an event where. Um, where the variable selected line will be updated with the information uh, displayed, the current information from the database. So let's say uh, we'll call this 
um, this is selecting a line. So the event is on click when the user clicks on the line and it really needs to be at the line level here. Um, then what we'll do is we will uh, change a variable value and the variable value, um, the variable will be selected line. So in order to create a variable, you can go here, variable and add a variable. Here we created a variable um, with a object type. The reason for that is that we want to pass through all the information from the table and it'll be very obvious in a few seconds what that looks like. So the new value is on the selected line will be this and this is an object. So by default, um, WeWeb automatically sees this information because we know you're on this line. This in is the information from this line. So we're, we're giving you a quick access to um, the data for this item. And this data is an object, hence creating um, object type, a variable. So we'll go ahead and pass, uh, this is the new value. So whenever a uh, user clicks, uh, so clicks on a line, it will change the variable. Let me show you right now in preview mode. We'll go back here. So in our navigator, you can either see um, the list of items on your page or variables. And now our selected line uh, variable is right here. And let's see, let's click here. Let's click on Porsche. And there you go. This is filled out suddenly with the information from, from this item, uh, the Porsche uh, right here, um, Brooklyn, New York, Williamsburg, it's right here. And this is the car name. And if we change, here we go, we'll change. And now suddenly um, it's, the, um, it's the Fiat 500. So let's see if I can show you here. It's a lot of information. So, oh yeah, so car name, uh, Fiat. Uh, 500e. Um, so yeah, you, you can see that whenever we click here, it changes the variable here. So that works. Now what we want to do is uh, we want this information uh, to be pre-filled uh, with, um, with the selected line information. So in order to do that, uh, we'll want to um, uh, we'll want to go on here and initialize the value to our website variable, selected line, and it will be the car name. And then we'll do the same on the location name. The initial value will be um, whatever selected line value there is. So the location is here. And the mileage will be, again, variables, the, a variable from the website, the selected line variable, and we'll go ahead and find the mileage. So now, if I click on preview, I click on open Mocha, so it updates the variable selected line, and it also updates the form with my information. And you can see I can keep doing that, and it automatically, uh, yeah, it automatically um, fills out the information here. So now it's pretty simple. Uh, the last step is at the form container level. So let me click on this little green um, uh, pencil here, which brings us to the form container. On the entire form, I'm, get, I'm going to add a workflow. The workflow will be update um, database, really. And the event will be on submit. So whenever someone submits uh, the form and the action will be to update a record in Airtable. The collection will be the fleet dynamic collection and the record ID will be from our selected line. We'll go ahead and get the ID, uh, which is right here. Now, for the car name, we're not going to get the, the car name from the selected line because maybe the user changed it. So we need to get from the components, we need to get the variable car name. So remember the car name value uh, variable is the variable that's attached to the input on the form. So if the user updated the, the um, car name in the form, 
that's the information we want to pass to our dat database. If we had selected the, you know, the selected the car name and the selected line, we wouldn't be updated on anything. We would just be sending back the same data. So for mileage now, we're going to do the same. Go to components and select the mileage value. And finally, for the location, we are going to do the same thing, which is the location name here. All right, and now um, that should be it, really. I'm updating the record. So let's see if this works. I'll go into preview mode. I'll select Opal Mocha. And I'm going to say it's actually not 10 miles, it's 100 miles. And I will submit my form. And it updated here. So I can assume that it also updated here. With, let's say, so it's the Opal Mocha. Um, and where is the Opal Mocha here? Uh, okay, it's right here. So there it is, it is updated. And let's update it again, just so you know that, just so you can see that it wasn't 100 before. Um, I'll update it again, and this time I'll say, uh, 1114. Um, it'll update uh, here and it updated here. All right, so that works. Now you may want to add a success message uh, to your form when it submits uh, correctly. That's for a separate tutorial.